there's detailed features for different parts of faces. There's subsurface scattering because we think of humans as opaque, but really our, our skin is light travels through it. It's not completely opaque. And the way in which light travels through skin has a huge impact on our appearance. You know, this is why you, there's no way you can paint a mannequin to look realistic for a human. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just a solid surface. Um, and we'll never have the sort of detail you, you see. We should actually just linger on that. That kind of blew my mind, like thinking through that. I think I heard that sort of the oiliness of the skin creates very specific, nuanced, complex reflections. And then some light is absorbed and travels through the skin. And that creates, would it be fair to say, like micro shadows or something? It creates like textures that are human eyes able to perceive. And it creates the thing that we consider human, whatever that is. And so like, you have to compute both that, the reflection, how light interacts with the oiliness of the skin and how it is also absorbed in. And all of that while considering the mus all the muscles involved in making the nuance expression, just the subtle squinting of the eyes or the subtle formation of a smile. It's a stupid, annoying subtlety of human faces that you have to capture. Like the difference between a real smile and a fake smile. Man, I love human faces. I love humans in general. But the way to show like beginning of a formation of a smile that actually reveals a deep sadness. All of that, like when I watch a human face, I can like read that. I could see that. Again, this is the, the engineering and the artist. You have to have the tools that in real time can render something like that. And that's incredibly difficult. But anyway, sorry. So yeah, so there's a lot of this kind of complexity in even just the lighting of a face. That's right. Getting faces right requires the interplay of literally dozens of different systems and aspects of computer graphics. And if any one of them is wrong, your eye is completely drawn to that and you find it on the wrong side of Uncanny Valley. So the level of perfection needed in this area is vastly, vastly higher than you know, world rendering or grass or any of these other things. Um, you know, if the shadows on a on a work of architecture are slightly wrong, you're pretty forgetting with it, actually. Your, your brain doesn't really care that much, but if anything wrong with the human, and the, it's, uh, it's totally jarring. Can you speak more to the creation of digital humans with MetaHuman, both on the editor side and sort of bringing it to life side? Uh, it seems like, because I've watched a bunch of videos, a bunch of individual developers doing it, it's, it's not too difficult to bring a human to life using the tooling that uh, um, Unreal Engine Editor provides? There are two main tools. Uh, you know, compared to the old days where every face was created by hand by an artist from scratch, um, one is the MetaHuman Creator tool for creating faces, where you have a huge number of parameters you can adjust to create a unique human by adjusting all the different capabilities of them. And you can then get that out of MetaHuman Creator into Unreal Engine, and then you can add all kinds of computer graphics features uh, they're in, in the engine. Uh, you could add clothing using the cloth simulation system, and you can adjust the hair and uh, all these other parameters on the thing. Um, and then there's MetaHuman Animator, a tool for animating a human uh, based on a facial capture, which can be done on a device as simple as like an iPhone, and transfers the captured animation to the human you want, which is not straightforward. If the actor has one face shape and the character on screen has another face shape, the translation that needs to be done from the actor to the face is actually really sophisticated and non-obvious. And if you just applied it literally, then it would be completely wrong from your point of view. So those are the main tools that people are using now. And then within the Unreal Engine, then you have a face and you can do absolutely anything you want to it. And you could also, you know, if you decide to go outside of the metahuman geometry pipeline, you could build your own face, like a, you know, any creature of any sort, and then use the animation tools to animate it. But, you know, this is 30 years into a project that's probably <laughs> like 50 years in total to get to absolute photorealism and controllability for absolutely everything. So there's vast amounts of work still to do. And, um, you know, we don't feel like we've solved the problem at all. We've just given or it's a big productivity multiplier and a quality multiplier, but this is not uh, in a state that we would say is done. But nevertheless, I've seen people use it really effectively. I saw almost like plugins, maybe external services, where you can get the faces to approximate the mouth movements required to speak a thing. So like that, that, that that's, that's a really useful feature. Yeah, that's right. When you have an 
artist or actor in your studio and you're recording a specific performance, you can just capture their facial motion and apply it. But if all you have is a voice recording or you're generating a voice recording or it's parametric or procedural or AI generated, yeah, then you need the system to translate that speech, not only to movement of the mouth and lips, but also to facial expressions and the whole intent. You know, when we're speaking, it's our whole face that's active and uh, emoting in different ways and not just uh, it's not just a mechanical motion of the pieces.